Hi, Ying. All right, Simon. Hey, congratulations on your new film, The Mousetrap. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, no, not a problem. Not a problem. It, you know, it's it's always funny. Is because uh, the, the, I, I heard about this film right right when I want to say the copyright trademark expired, and and you got you guys made the made the news. This, this you you work pretty fast to get this, <laughs> this this turned around. Oh well, we had um uh, I knew that that was coming. Yeah, so the news was always going to report on January first, twenty twenty four, that Mickey Mouse had passed into public domain. It was going to be a a news story. Like, and if you knew that that was coming, which I did, uh, you're like, ah, we should make a movie right now in twenty twenty three and have it ready to drop on twenty the first of January, twenty twenty four, because we will join on on that news cycle, you know. So it was it was pretty orchestrated from our, our point of view because I knew that it was going to be topical uh, when they talked about it. So good timing. <laughs> it, it, it is excellent timing, especially the fact that uh, you, you rolled the dice on the fact that uh, Disney wasn't going to, uh, you know, how can you say, strong arm Congress to extend it again or something like that. <laughs> I don't, I, uh, all the articles that I read about it and I, I'd seen about it, they, they had already extended their license a couple of times. Uh, but the last time that they did it, they were like, this is the last time. Like, it, it, it can never happen again. Um, so, and I, I think there were lots of people that complained about the last extension going, you know, this isn't right. You know, like, uh, you know, so I think Disney had, uh, had uh, you know, had strong armed uh, Congress for the, the, the too, one too many times there. So they couldn't, I don't think they could do it again. Uh, you know, we're all a bit more awake now and a bit more online. So, you know, the last time they did it, the internet was still in its infancy. So, uh, you know, but now people are much more aware of what's happening. So tell us about the original idea for uh, for this film, The Mousetrap. So um, I'm sure you're aware of a movie called uh, Blood and Honey, the uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, horror movie. So, I mean, when I saw that and I was like, what a wonderful idea. Um, just playing with that because they could, it passed into public domain and... Uh, you know, sort of, uh, they had uh, such a good uh, idea um, and not a great movie, but uh, certainly a great idea uh, when they did it. So that was the jump off point uh, is that because then I heard that Mickey Mouse or Steamboat Willie's Mickey Mouse was dropping into public domain in 2024. And at the time it was 2023. So we, myself and Jamie Bailey, um, I, I, I told him about the idea and I was like, look, I've had this mad idea uh, just uh you know, a Mickey Mouse sort of 90s slasher movie, you know, sort of uh, all set in one location, like a bunch of kids trapped inside a, a, an arcade or an amusement park. Uh, what do you think? And he was like, yeah, and he just ran with it. He was like, that's great. You know, like, so let's do it. And I was like, and then we, the idea was always that we would drop the trailer for whatever movie we made on January 1st, 2024. That was always the plan. Um, so, and, and then we just, we just ran with it. So, it, uh, you know, we had, to, we shot it in September. So we had four months before we had to, drop the trailer so we just worked hard at getting it ready um, and I was super convinced that we wouldn't be the only people that did it uh, but we were <laughs> well I, I think it's because you beat everyone to the game and that's and, that, and that's what you actually did uh, very well um, now in terms of uh, Mickey being in public domain o only the steamboat Mickey is in public yes. domain, right you, so, you, you can't use the current Mickey that's actually uh, no well, and if you look at the the movie, our Mickey, he doesn't look like maybe the Mickey Mouse you think. Uh, you know, like he doesn't have the white gloves or the red jumpsuits or uh, any of the characteristics because Disney still own the latter iterations of Mickey Mouse. So we're only talking about the very first one, um, which is why ours, he's in black and white. Uh, so, you know, sort of, uh, and he looks a certain way, like his eyeballs are all black. Um, he doesn't have eyebrows. Um, you know, it's, he looks a bit different because he has to look like the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse. Um, so yes, it's only the original one. So we had to be very careful when we were designing the mask and the character and what he was wearing and stuff like that, that he didn't look like the modern day Mickey Mouse, because that's something you can't do. Now, you, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but you do have a tremendous love for Disney, as indicated in the film. Yeah, I, so yeah, people get you know saying they go, "Oh, you hate Disney," and I was like, oh, "I mean, quite the opposite. I love Disney. Number one, I have Disney Plus, and I love, I enjoy everything Disney make. I, I really do. I'm like still a big kid at heart. Remember that I, my job here gig is playing dress up for a living. Trust me, I, I love Disney and and the imagination it fires. We are simply having fun." And, you know, having fun and being creative. I mean, that's, those are fun and creativity is at the bedrock principle of Disney and how it's set up. You know, that's that's what it is. And we're just playing with the public domain. 
uh, use of the character. So yes, we're making a, a slasher movie, but that, that's, I mean, that's for me, that's what fun is, you know, sort of, I was like, I like all those things. Uh, but yeah, I, this is not some sort of anti-Disney uh, stance or anything like that. Says like, both myself and Jamie are big Disney fans. Uh, in fact, we'd love to do something for Disney. I'm not sure they let us, but uh, we'd still love to do it. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess the good news is that uh, Disney Plus does does now allow uh, horror movies to be played on Disney Plus, not not just children's films. So maybe you'll that, have, I, a, have that chance. <laughs> but maybe that but that would be good if it got. I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't wind up there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that won't be one of the platforms it's on. <laughs> now, now tell us about the development of the uh, of the costume. How how long did that actually take, especially uh, for for the mask? Yeah, the, I mean, the mask was the big thing. Yeah, obviously, the costume itself. The costume was more like it just had to not be something. So they're like, you can have black gloves, not white gloves, and it, we couldn't have the red jumpsuit. So we had a black jumpsuit, but it had little bits of red on it. So we, we still have, uh, we still threw the color in there, but not in a not in a jumpsuit. It's a hockey jersey, you know, sort of. So. Uh, it was like that. The mask itself took uh, Jesse Edwards created the mask, uh, and she had to change a few things. You know, so first off, it had eyebrows and stuff like that, and it's not allowed to have eyebrows. So it went through um, a couple of iterations before we got it right. Uh, so that was that was the big thing was making sure that the mask was right, um, uh, and we did. We had to. That's why it's black and white. So you're in a color movie, but the he's black and white. You know, sort of because that's the that's the origin of the character there. Now you you donned the mask in in the film. Um, how how challenging was that um, to to play the character of yeah. Mickey in in that film? Right. Now, one thing I will tell you, Gig, about the mask is that the mask was bloody awful to wear because uh, it was a big thick rubber mask, so it's 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 quite heavy. And it's and when we designed it, I don't know why we did this. I was like, we didn't design it to breathe. Like, so it's uh, there's no breathing hole, so we had to cut a small hole to breathe in it but it was um it was very hot inside the mask and he's often killing people and uh it's sweaty work as it were so it's uh wearing the mask was terrible uh but then we designed it we didn't design it to be easy to wear we designed it to look good and those are often not the same things <laughs> i i could i could tell uh most definitely uh by watching the film that uh that whoever was wearing the mask which was you that you you were that it was difficult to breathe and because that, because it didn't look comfortable. <laughs> that is for sure. sure. Yes. <laughs> tell, tell us about the fun part that you uh, commandeered um, because, uh, because I've been to many, uh, you know, local, uh, you know, little fun parks, but that, that place looked huge. Oh yeah. That was a huge place. So it's filmed in a place called fun Haven, which is up in Ottawa in Canada. And they just, you know, we asked some other places uh, to, we, we found some other amusement parks and we asked them to do the same thing. We were going to film at night when they were closed. So if they, this place was open to like 9 p.m. at night and we were going to come in afterwards and then and then film uh, when they were closed. But some uh, some of the other places were like, what is, what's the movie? And then we told them what it was and they were like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no we don't want that. And the, but the Fun Haven didn't mind. They were like, yeah, okay, that sounds great. That sounds crazy, great. And they let us, so we had the whole park um and we filmed it at night when they closed so at nine o'clock i think they stayed up until and we filmed right through till like eight o'clock in the morning uh the next day so and we just kept doing that we just kept coming back um kept filming until how, we were all done how how many nights uh did you have to do for a, a production like this uh just it was like just two weeks uh, it was the whole thing so it wasn't it wasn't long uh roughly so yeah it was it it was hard work hard like, a lot there was a lot to do um and a lot of characters, but uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was good fun. We make stuff like this, uh, you know, all the time. So we knew, we know what we were doing with it. And that's that's the gig. That's part of this process. We knew what trying to move, movie we were going to make. So when you know what the product looks like, you're like, oh, okay, it, the movie becomes a lot easier to make. Well said, well said. And and I know you you are a seasoned actor, but a lot of the young actors in your film are are not are not that seasoned and a lot of I want to say a lot of them is their first time in a in a film like it's this. Definitely they're definitely a, a young cast because because remember we needed a young cast. Uh so they are uh you know they did wonderfully uh you know they had to play the the 20 year olds kids and obviously they are 20 year olds and some of them are 19 and stuff like that. So they're very young and enthusiastic. So uh you know so well, that's uh they, they did uh but they are in, i guess they are it's some of their debuts is definitely it's, it's one or two of their first movies 
Uh, so, but I think they did fantastically well uh, for being thrown in the deep end gig. I imagine this is a, you know, this isn't just a movie. It's a horror movie on night shoots, which are always a tough, you know, it's tough for you to have energy at night, you know, sort of. But uh, if you've done it, I've done it a few times. Uh, so I, I know how to, you know, pace yourself. But uh, obviously when you're young and inexperienced, they, they get tired at 3 a.m. You know, sort of uh, being like, yeah, well, you know, you have to kind of pace yourself. So I think they, they learned a huge amount on the movie. Um, and you know, and, and I'm sure they'll all have wonderful careers after this. <laughs> and what what is your personal love for doing a horror movie, especially an indie horror movie like this? You know what? I don't really actually like horror movies. Uh, they scare me too much. So I I wouldn't like go to uh, watch horror movies too often. I do like uh, the occasional horror movie. I do, but I don't like. It's not like I watch all horror movies. Like that's the only thing I actually like. Uh, it, I like all kinds of movies. Like, in fact, I like Disney movies. I like sort of family adventure movies like Indiana Jones or, uh, you know, the big tentpole pictures, you know. So I like all those Marvel movies. I like all that stuff. Um, horror is not something I need to. But when I'm making a movie, I know that there's a massive audience for horror, uh, you know, sort of, and they, they, they do enjoy that. So, I mean, I enjoy making horror movies rather than watching them, if that makes sense. Now, as a, as an indie uh, horror movie yourself, um, and I, I like to ask anybody who who does horror movie because there there's a big difference between using practical versus CGI effects. So, and I want to say your film used both. So tell tell us uh, which side you're on and what, what, what which do you prefer. Uh I'm 100% on the practical effects side. Um, and the, and the, all of our stuff is, uh, all of our stuff was practical uh, on this one. There's no, uh, there's no uh, CG apart from the, apart from the head shop uh, scene, uh, like, and I won't say where that is, but uh, there was one bit of uh, VFX that just wouldn't have been possible to shoot practically. Uh, so only if it's impossible to shoot, um, do we add it, do we make it like that sort of something. So I don't mind that in this type of movie because, this is a little bit of a, a homage to slashers movies, and even the the VFX on that one, they look a bit nineties, and I quite like that. Like it was like a little rougher around the edges back when they tried to do it then. So I quite like that. <laughs> well, let me start wrapping things up with you, Simon. Um, what's up next uh, with you? Is there a possibility of a uh, you know a sequel to The Mousetrap? Now I can't possibly say anything about that right now, uh, but soon. <laughs> and um just real fast um the uh so mickey is the one that's uh that's actually into public domain but none of the characters from steamboat other characters from steamboat willie is in public domain right you, you could correct me if i'm wrong oh yeah no they are so for instance Minnie mouse is in public domain too oh wow so there but so just there's... again just just the uh the steamboat willie version of Minnie Mouse and the, all the other and the steamboat uh, version uh, of Pete you know the character there's a the stinky Pete is the is in that so the, all, all of the I mean because what, what's in public domain is actually Steamboat Willie like the actual cartoon so any character in that is also in public domain by proxy is also in public domain well then there's a huge possibility for a sequel but we can't talk about that right now so Simon you thank you for that right now <laughs> Thank you very much for carrying this conversation with us about that Mickey's uh the the mouse trap. So hopefully we get to do this again. We will. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. King. Bye now.